got right. kids. As long as you got kids, it's, you can, it's, it's you can awesome. get out of anything. <laughs> Yeah, my daughter's off at college. I can't use her quite as much. Uh, what other excuses can we use in recovery or, or, or when we want to get out of shit? Work. Work. I used to use my girlfriend's dog. She has a chihuahua, so what mine was always... Yeah. Uh, I uh, the, the chihuahua got out again. It got under the fence again, so I can't do what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> There's another thing that's in the big book that says we, we've ceased fighting. Everything and everyone. Everything and everyone. Really? You mean, wait a minute. Sometimes I need to like, I'm ready. I'm ready let to go. go. Let go and let God, Bob. I had a sponsor who said, when you're all confused and you're agitated in the morning, get your knees, get down and just say one word. Yeah. Just say whatever, but mean it. Hey there, and welcome to the Recovery Crew podcast here at Deep Waters Recovery. Uh, I'm Dr. Bob Bear, and today we welcome back our friend, uh, Dr. Uh, Scott Basinger. <clears throat> uh, we're going to have a discussion about the 11th step. The 11th step really is a conversation about how to open our minds to the possibility that there's more to all this, and that maybe there's more support for us than this little 1% of our mind. Uh, there, there's quite a bit of research that shows that we use less than 1% of our capacity for consciousness. And uh, maybe we could open ourselves up a little bit for a little bit more support. It seems like a good strategy to me. So that's the conversation today. We're glad you're here. Um, please like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, reach out to us at the website, deepwatersrecovery.com. So glad you're here. Have fun with us. Uh, you're in the deep waters now. All right, here we are back a week later. <laughs> back a week late. Actually, it's only a few minutes later, but don't tell anybody. Uh, we are back with Scott Basinger uh, and uh, Wes Shepard. Uh, Wes is our co-host here. He knows about podcasts, and he's also uh, a guy who's launched, d dived into the deep end of the recovery pool. Um, hey, Wes. Good to How see you, you again. Good to see you, Dr. Bob. Thank you. Uh, yep. And Scott Basinger. How are you, brother? Good to see you here again. Thank you, Bob. Really, really good to see you, my brother. We go back many years and that's right. Uh, to be on the road of happy destiny with you has been a great pleasure for me. That's right. But don't count the years. Do not be broadcasting the actual number of years. All right, Nicole, are you in there? Uh, Nicole is our program manager here at Deep Waters, and she's going to uh, light up the screen and give us some information about how people can reach us. Thanks, Bob. Um, Deep Waters Recovery, we are an advanced recovery and healing experience for women and men. Uh, it's 10 hours per week, three groups a week. Um, you can reach us at 512-677-7847. We'd love to hear from you. You can reach us at uh, deepwatersrecovery.com. We post weekly blogs from our community. Our podcast comes out weekly, The Recovery Group. And you can follow us on all the social media sites, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, um, again, our number is 512-677-7847, and you can reach me directly. My email is admin, A-D-M-I-N, at deepwaterrecovery.com. Thanks, Nicole. Uh, Nicole keeps uh, everything organized, and th those of you that know me know that that is a bit, uh, many of you have said, Bob, why don't you get somebody to help you organize some shit? <laughs> Finally, I've done it. And uh, thank you, Nicole. Uh, she's okay. also an amazing healer, and uh, glad to have uh, uh, glad to have you on this team. Okay, so today we are going to be talking about step eleven. Uh, and, and, uh, we've, uh, we've got a guy that's been on that topic for quite a while here, and a guy that's been uh, avoiding that topic for quite a while there, Wes, and then another guy that's avoided the topic for many years, uh, Dr. Bob Bear. Uh, so we brought in. <laughs> Scott to straighten us out today, but Scott, uh, Dr. Scott Basinger, uh, sir, uh, if you weren't with us last week, uh, uh, his uh, resume is very long. I ran out of paper, so uh, uh, he, he served in so many different uh, ways, uh, so in so many different capacities at Baylor College of Medicine in the Houston Medical Center, um, and he's also the founding executive director of the Hope and Healing Center. He was uh, the director of education at the Center for Recovering Families, which is just an iconic uh, 
historical place that people don't even know how much value that has had in the recovery world, especially not just in Texas, but, uh, but uh, it, it's, uh, it's resonated throughout the entire world, really. Uh, recipient of many awards. Uh, not, you can listen to last week's if you want the full resume of Scott Basinger. Uh, but uh, uh, so glad you're here, brother. And so step 11. All right. So this is a, this is a, a little master class on step 11, if there's a such thing as, as that. Uh, so um, one of the things that we weren't when we were out there using is connected, connected right? There's some people that say the opposite of addiction is connection. I don't know if I buy that or not, but it's a good conversation to have. It's because I was damn sure not connected to you in any authentic way when I was out there using, or even when I, you know, even now, even these days, if I, uh, you know, if I'm not in a, in a centered place, I'm all in myself and don't have a sense that I'm connected to others. So I'm just going to do the uh, you know, this is a series and we are in step 11. We, uh, if you go on our website, the YouTube channel or our website, you'll see the first 10, uh, steps are, uh, are addressed. Uh, and we're going to do step 11 today, but the first step we surrender, we say, I can't do it. The second step, we wonder if maybe we could come back to something that resembles sanity. The third step is where we make a decision to do some shit different. <laughs> and maybe, maybe, maybe there's another way. And maybe we can commit to this, right? And then the fourth step is a, a thorough look at ourselves, which we were avoiding intensely all these years, right? Uh, unconsciously avoiding looking at ourselves. And then the fifth step is an is a opportunity to actually begin sharing that stuff right? Letting it out. Uh, speaking of letting out, I'm going to let my dog out here. Okay, buddy. Okay, buddy. Come on. Come on. You got to let out the dog every once in a while. So you got, and, and I have to let out uh, the stuff that I've been holding, right? That's what the fifth step teaches. Sixth step and seventh step are uh, sometimes brushed over quickly, but though <laughs> That is where I take a, am I really ready to change my life? Am I ready to let go of that stuff? And uh, there is a lot to this. Uh, drop the rock, baby, drop the rock. Um, and eight and nine are where we make amends and make some re reconciliation. Ten is a very specific set of things that I do every day to, to, to sort of keep all of the previous nine steps alive. And uh, mostly it's about taking a look at myself, my side of the street. Um, now, step 11, we have no clue. That's why we brought Scott here, to give us all of the possible answers that there might be. Uh, so step 11 is we sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God as we understood him, praying only for knowledge of his will for us and the power to carry that out. Um, so what the hell does that mean, Scott? Uh, thanks, Bob. Uh, <laughs> Hey, Wes. Hey, Scott. Uh, Good to see you again. Uh, I, of all the steps, um, which I've worked and reworked and reworked, um, this is my constant companion. Um, I awaken in the morning, and before I get out of bed, I <clears throat> usually say the serenity prayer, third step prayer, seven step prayer. Um, after I get some <clears throat> coffee in me, I, I'm a knee prayer. Um, I started praying on my knees after two weeks in treatment. Um, and so every morning for 11,912 11, days, I think I have today, I've been, I get on my knees. I do it like a little boy um, and I, I have a routine I use. And, um, but a major part of it, all of this is under the umbrella of seeking. How do we seek? through prayer and meditation. Why are we doing this? To improve our conscious contact with God, very important italics coming as we understand God. Well, how do I do this, Bob? Well, on your knees, apparently, but I, I, I do want to say, as we get older, that is a bigger commitment than it used to be. Yeah, I use my right hand to lift myself up. <laughs> But the step, the step itself tells me how to do it. Yeah. It says pray only for knowledge of God's will for
for us and the power to carry that out. But what about all that shit that I need, that I need to pray for? And, and, and like, uh, all, uh, I need stuff, Scott. Uh, I have found over the years, Bob, <laughs> because of men in the fellowship who said, if I'm praying for a new girlfriend or praying for a new sports car, uh, the intuition I get from my higher power uh, will be blocked uh, because mm. prayers for self, Bob, represent selfish and self-centered. Mm. And I started out in my growing addiction as selfish and self-centered. Um, it, says, it says several times in that section of the big book, something about if you do this stuff and you do it enough, you're going to find that you're inspired, that you're living by an inspiration, which is, I like that word in, in spirit, right? I'm going to in be spirit. inspired. And to follow through on that, I really do. It's, you know, I've been doing this a long time and, um, there is no question in my mind, if I open myself up, um, Shel Silverstein says light comes in through the cracks. If I open mm. myself up, I will have an inspiration from my higher power. Yeah. I'll be directed to do the next thing right or the next right thing. And here's, here's some of the logic there for those of us that like a little bit of logic. Uh, which is most of us alcohol, you better prove it to me, right? Uh, it, doesn't it make sense? So this is a quote from the big book. We become much more efficient. We do not tire so easily. We are not burning up energy. Uh, and, and we constantly remind ourselves we're no longer running the show uh, uh, and, and trying to arrange life to suit ourselves. Don't, I just feel tired saying that. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, doesn't it make sense that if we let go of some of that stuff, and, and that we're going to have more juice, more energy, more, well, inspiration. Well, the, the selfishness and self-centeredness that grows as your addiction grows literally ends up placing what I call the committee in my head. And the committee is constantly chattering, constantly warning me, constantly re reminding me that I'm going to get caught, that I'm a phony, et cetera, et cetera. And I, I have no time for any any advice, any intuition. In fact, my metaphor for my entire life in addiction and is the Wizard of Oz. Um, as my addiction grew, I was so terrified that she'd find out who I was that I presented myself as the great and powerful Oz. And what I felt like inside was the little man behind the curtain. And I was terrified that somebody would pull that curtain back and expose me, that I wasn't the great and powerful Oz. And sure enough, my intervention, that's exactly what occurred. They pulled the curtain back and there I was naked, ashamed, beaten, torn. And they said they loved me. And they said, we'd like you to go to charm school. Maybe you can become <laughs> charming. <laughs> So I went off to charm school and um, my journey toward step 11, Bob, began with the way you started, a complete surrender, um, literally looking in the rear view mirror yeah. at how often I had tried, you know, to, to claim some sort of reasonable life. And you did it casually, right? It wasn't any, you didn't have any pain or anything that uh, might have been involved. No, it was just a... <laughs> It was literally 10 years, a 10 year descent into living in my own foreclosed home. I was a quarter of a million dollars in debt. I yeah. had, that's three years of salary in debt, arrest warrants, bank lawsuits. Um, and I was terrified. I mean, I was shaking behind that curtain. Yeah. <clears throat> but looking in the rear view mirror and realizing, and then the fellowship helped. Um, because I saw guys ahead of me in treatment, ahead of me in, at AA meetings. They believed in God, and they believed in the, following the intuition of God. Yeah, because you're a smart guy, right? I mean, you got a lot of degrees and uh, 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 scientist and uh, all of that. This uh, this idea of God, doesn't it? it, it what? It, it's like some superficial, airy-fairy Santa Claus kind of a thing, right? 
Well, I certainly became, science and medicine became my God. Uh-huh. And, and um, I will tell you after many, many, many years of, of doing both spirituality and science, they blend beautifully together. Um, yeah. Here, here's something from the 12 and 12. To, uh, so to certain newcomers, claims for the power of prayer may still be unconvincing or quite, un- or quite objectionable. Something deep inside us kept rebelling against the idea of bowing before any God, <laughs> right? Many of us had strong logic. What about all the sickness, cruelty, injustice? Therefore, there is no God at all. I mean, many arguments against this uh, this thing that you're trying to get me to surrender toward. And there's one word in the third step that solves that problem for me. And it's the word care. Mm-hmm. It asks me to turn my will and my life over to the care of a higher power. And the implication there is that since I'm allowed to invent anybody I want, anything I want for my higher power, why not invent one that's all loving, all kind, the perfect father? Um, mm-hmm. And I did that. I have a higher power who cares for me. Who many, loves folk, me. many folks come in with, a, with some uh, stuff in their psyche related to some big guy sitting up in the, uh, on some big chair with, with a big whip. And uh, maybe, maybe if if you had a Catholic dose, maybe there's a what you call what's that thing you hit yourself in the back with um, fla- uh, self flagellating? Yes, <laughs> yes, and and fire a little fire and brimstone possibly. Yep. For for I, good measure. I had a catechism from Sister Mary Shame a lot, and she was um... <laughs> <laughs> and Sister Mary better than you. Yeah, Sister Mary, and reminded me what a ignorant little boy I was and why I couldn't kneel straight in the communion. Block. Yeah, so it, does, it makes a lot of sense in our culture and with the history. Uh, and we all have our own story, right? My story is about my mom is from a strong Catholic family. My dad's from a strong Presbyterian family. Their religion in our house was to make sure that I didn't become the other one. <laughs> so yeah. I, I, I didn't get much, but it also gave me some freedom to explore that maybe some other folks who got the fire and brimstone or the or the self-flagellating thing a little stronger, maybe don't have. But it does make sense why people would come in wildly skeptical of the spiritual stuff here. Right, Wes? I see Wes nodding his head. What, say something, brother. Yeah, I didn't, I mean, I didn't believe any of that shit. And when I got to TLR, I think they, they kind of knew that. And they put me with a, my counselor was a really religious guy. So he forced me to get on my knees and, and pray. And, and, and that was huge for me, just the willingness to kind of say, okay, I'll try this out. And then, um, you know, feeling what, what came of it. Um, you know, it took me a couple of weeks to, to, to force myself to, to pray and to meditate and to ch- kind of get over myself and thinking that this was a bunch of mumbo mumbo bullshit, mumbo jumbo bullshit. But um, once I did, and once I had a kind of an experience where I started to feel the power, um, I, I was, you know, kind of laughed at myself and was really thankful that that was the person they put me uh, with when I got there. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's, it's powerful when you connect into it. That's for sure. Yep. And it can be the doorknob if you want it. That's what I love the irreverence of this. You make it the doorknob. God is the doorknob. And Basinger, uh, Basinger made, made it uh, Abraham Lincoln, right? Yeah. Was your God for a while. Yeah. I, I love the fact that we do, <laughs> do not tell me who, what God is in this program. That's the beauty of it. If, if, the, if the big book says in italics in steps three and 11, God, as I understand God, then I can have any higher power I want. And as you, if you'll listen to the story um, from last week's podcast, my current higher power is the creator of all things. Uh-huh. There's this awesome feeling I get when I look at the night sky and see all of this incredible material and real and feel totally insignificant yet totally special. And that, that paradoxical feeling, that dialectic feeling of feeling insignificant and yet very special and unique is just wonderful. Hey, what, what page is what, what page is the uh, 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 prior to investigation? Oh, here, here it is. Here Herbert it is. Ready? Spencer. Yeah. All right, got it. 
568. All right, are you ready for this? There is a principle, which is a bar against all information, which is proof against all arguments, and which cannot fail to keep a man in everlasting ignorance. That principle is contempt prior to investigation. <laughs> I was against everything. And that'll keep, that, that, that is guaranteed to keep me ignorant. Yeah. Absolutely. My, my, at six months sober, I went to the Holy Name Retreat Center with 71 uh -huh. other men. Uh -huh. <clears throat> and there were, we went through the steps and I strongly promote you going to the <clears throat> retreat center for their retreats. But um, at the end of that, 72 men circle up in a giant circle and they hold hands together <clears throat> and they say the Lord's Prayer in unison. Yeah. And I looked around that room. There were men who were uh, literally whose addiction had beaten them down. There yeah. were CEOs. There were some of the finest, incredible <clears throat> men in the city, in this country. <clears throat> and all of them believed. And that was my second step. That was my coming to believe. Yeah, and there, there, there is a, you know, let's just put it out here. The 12-step the, the recovery was birthed out of Christian stuff. Let's just say that the Oxford group was a bunch of Christian stuff. And, yeah. you know, we all know that uh, Christianity has been a beautiful comfort for so many people over the centuries and has also probably created more death and destruction than any other <laughs> organized group. Uh, so. It makes sense that we would have a mix of feelings about all that as we come in, right? And then if they launch into the Lord's Prayer, we know that's a Christian prayer. But there's also a hundred other prayers. And, you know, for me, I've had to just let go of needing it to be the way I need it to be for, and, but I, because I get a lot of freedom. And if I don't like a meeting because they're reading the Lord's Prayer, I, apparently all I need is a resentment of a coffee pot to start another meeting. <laughs> that's the beauty. That's why 12-step recovery has lasted as long as it had. And, you know, for me, uh, pausing when agitated has been one of the, uh, one of the best directions for me. I did a visualization in a men's group last night the four archetypes, king, warrior, magician, lover, the healthy uh, masculine. And uh, we did this uh, 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 visualization where we talked and listened to the archetype, right? The king, the warrior, and the magician are all telling me, Bob, get still, find stillness, right? And that's the 11th step here. Uh, this is from the 12 and 12. Meditation is an individual adventure. It has no boundaries and it is intensely practical, its first fruit is emotional balance. Did you, do you remember that from the 12 and 12? Scott's a kind of a 12-step a uh, literature uh, scholar uh, that I don't remember ever reading that before. It's intensely practical. Its first fruit is emotional balance. You want to say something about that? Well, when, you're, when you are in the middle of your addiction and you're looking over your shoulder, you're out of money, you're worried about being discovered, you're, you're late for whatever you're doing, your committee in your head is screaming at you. There's no emotional balance. There's just literally fear and terror. So in sobriety, we literally learn to center ourselves, say a simple little prayer like, I can't, you can, I want you to. That's the version of the first three steps. Thy will, not my will be done and center myself, calm down. And when I open myself up, the intuition comes and I get the support I need to do the next right thing or the next yeah. thing right. Yeah, the, uh, something that occurs to me is absolutely just for me to stay sober, <laughs> which is important for the whole rest of anything else I wanna pull off in this lifetime. I, I've got to find a stillness inside of me. I have to, if I want to be of service in any way. So, uh, you know, so uh, the pausing when agitated and finding a meditative practice, by the way, meditation is a as a practice, that word is very useful because I've practiced for many, many years being agitated. It's going to take a meditation practice of many, many years to come to a place of anything that resembles stillness. And here's uh, like another quote from the 12 and 12, 
which is probably relevant for those of us. I, I know that you said you had a little engagement with somebody that might have been spurred by uh, by social issues that are happening on the, in the world right now. And I think we have all encountered these. Um, uh, but th th just see if this is relevant. Perhaps one of the greatest rewards of meditation and prayer is the sense of belonging that comes to us. <clears throat> we are no longer deeply disturbed by all the seeming evidence to the contrary that surrounds us in purely human affairs. We are we are uh, we are no longer deeply disturbed. <laughs> and there's another thing that's in the big book that says we we've ceased biting. Everything and everyone. Everything and everyone. Really? You mean? Wait a minute. Sometimes I need to like, don't I? I, I got my oh, fists Bob, up let, here. I'm ready. I'm ready to go. go. And, let go and let God, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> the. Uh, um, I want to support everyone who's in recovery, who knows the first verse of the serenity prayer, acceptance and courage and wisdom. I want you to learn the second verse and the third verse. The second verse says, living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time. That's being in the moment. Uh -huh. Accepting hardships as the pathway to peace, meaning just because you got sober, they're not going to be, you're not going to live a life free of hardships. Hmm. Taking the world as it is, not as I would have it. And the third verse says that if I trust God, that I will be reasonably happy in this life. Hmm. So the, our common prayer goes on to say that life, it's sort of a way of saying life on life's terms. But yeah. the beginning my day in the 11th step and using that short version of the first three steps throughout the day, pausing when agitated, yeah. um, shutting down my committee so I can be open to the intuition of my higher power. Mm -hmm. The other thing that, that I am convinced that God wants me to do, and this comes from the third step prayer and the seventh step prayer, he wants me to help others. And there is a spiritual link between service and, and recovery. Um, anytime I have a sponsee call me up and say, my hair's on fire. Hmm. You know, I'll say, All right, well, you know, go to a meeting, get a new sponsee, go do a piece of service or whatever. Because it's the way I get out of myself. Yeah, it's a trick. It's a little it's bit a of trick. a trick. A little bit like paying attention to our breath is a trick. Yeah. It's getting me out of here. In order to pay attention to my breath, I have to stop trying to figure shit out and run the show, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, and you, you yeah. mentioned deep meditation. I've been doing um, some deep meditation an hour uh, every couple of weeks with a very gifted um, shamanette. Um, and we do breath work to get me into the place where. Nice. And it's just been beautiful for me. So healing and so wonderful. Nice. Well, you mentioned, you mentioned something, Scott, about uh, doing service, right? These steps are in order for a reason, Bob. They're, you don't go helping people without, uh, you know, surrendering, taking a look at yourself, maybe doing some amends, and then learning how to shut the hell up and get still. Because I'm not going to be of much service to somebody in my agitated state. That's why... Step 11, it comes before step 12, right? It's not a perfect science. Of course, we're going to be in service uh, before we've worked a perfect uh, 11 steps, right? We're going to have service uh, service commitments. And, but I, I really find it interesting that the, the strong commitment to, um, to, to doing uh, uh, on awakening and uh, which is what we, that's the shorthand that we talk about the morning rituals that we do to find stillness and, and uh, our nightlies, which is our shorthand way of talking about our nighttime stillness practice. Uh, uh, as, as we do that more and more, we are going to be more available to hold space for someone else who needs help. I love the way these steps were, are divinely <laughs> inspired, man. Who are these guys? They're just a couple of assholes like us. And somehow that shit came through them in 1935 in a way that 
that uh, has, uh, has, has helped more people than uh, around addiction, certainly than any clinical uh, new adventure. What's the new adventure this year that somebody thinks they're going to arrest the disease of addiction? <laughs> it's it really, it, uh, we said it uh, earlier and I just love Wes beginning his journey. There is nothing I have done in my life that has led me to a, a place where I am not only proud of what I've done in recovery, but it has led me to a place where I'm, you know, it's a cheesy phrase, but I am happy, I am joyous, and I am free. Yeah. It's incredible. And the freedom that comes with literally following the intuition of my higher power instead of following the crazy direction of Lady Cocaine, who I was married to, uh, has made all the difference in the world. Um, and being a part of the fellowship. Um, Wes, I hope one day you'll, you'll be at a meeting with Bob and I, and it'll be a real meeting. And <laughs> me, me too. I can't wait. Right, I can't wait. Yeah. But the other thing I do, and I do this throughout the day, there's a, if you're old enough, you may remember a, a commercial um, for an in insurance company. You're in good hands with Allstate, and this guy would put his hands out. Yeah. Pop his hands out. Well, I do that during the day. I say, God, I'm going to put this issue, this problem, this worry, this fear, this yeah. confusion, I'm going to put this in my hands and I'm going to turn it over to you. Yep, the golden key. Uh, maybe we'll do. Maybe I'll get you back here, and we'll spend a whole uh, a bit of time with Emmett Fox's stuff on the golden key. It's a little pamphlet that you can anybody can. You don't have to get the pamphlet. You can read it online. It's a it's a five minute read on how to solve every problem in your life. <laughs> I love it. What a what a hook that is, right? And then eh, it's not easy though, but it is the answer. If I can turn my attention away from the problem. Even for a moment, it's a trick. Yes. When I turn back to the problem, especially if I turn away and turn towards a, a more of a spiritual topic for a moment, and if I turn back, somehow the problem yes. is at the very least not as bad. Sometimes it's gone. And I believe that's the intuition that sort of says, Bob, my son, you don't have to deal with this now. Deal with it yeah. later. Yeah, just, just follow me around, Scott, and say, hey, Bob, Bob, mm -hmm. come here. Get your mind off of that for a minute, will you? Just for a minute. Come over here. Come on. All right. Go back to it now. <laughs> yeah. That, that pause that you keep bringing up is so important. Yeah. Um, one of the huge problems that takes people back out early in recovery, Wes, is lack of impulse control. And just, uh, there's a famous comedian um, who says, first thought wrong. And early in recovery, my bad wolf would attack me, you know, and, you know, this is bullshit. I don't want to do this. You know, these meetings are dumb, et cetera, et cetera. And literally without some intervention and some pause that made said, wait a minute, recovery is going well for me. I'm going to stick with this for a while. Yeah. So That's Wes, exactly you don't have any impulse. Moments. Wes doesn't have any impulse control problems. Though. Yeah, no, not at all. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I, it's, uh, you know, and to everyone out there that's new in recovery, you know, I, I, I came out and rode the wave and now I'm, I'm doing the, I'm kind of doing the, uh, oh, this isn't, this is annoying. This, these, these meetings, I'm sick of going to online meetings, blah, 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 getting out of it. But, you know, the second I get back into the 11 step, especially, um, it all, it all comes back. It's just, it's hard to, hard to keep yourself in it. Um, especially when you're, when you're brand new and you think you've, you've got it, uh, you know, right out of recovery. Oh, I've got it now. Um, and then before it, what's ha what happened to me in the past is it was too late by the time I realized it. So yeah. being, uh, having that awareness that I, that I've gotten has been crucial because I didn't have it before. And that's what really, you know, I didn't, I didn't see it coming and, um, now I see it coming. So, um, it's, it's important. And then another thing I wanted to say, you know, I, I, I talked about the, the prayer and if you're out there and you're listening to this God stuff and you think it's a bunch of bullshit. And I, I was, I was, I was that guy. I was to the extreme that guy. And, um, I challenge you to just, you know, say a prayer for two weeks straight, um, you know, morning and night 
and just see how it goes. Because uh, I was I was definitely the guy that 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 said this is this is a bunch of malarkey, and um and it was crazy. The promises that came true when I when I just did that uh, were were really powerful. So if that, nothing else is, isn't working, you might as well give it a shot. Or if you need to take the eleven step, literally. The eleven step says, "Pray only for knowledge of God's will for me and the power to carry it out." It doesn't say the power to figure it out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, God, show me the way. Mind wants to figure it out. It doesn't have to be in any kind of uh, fancy language like Basinger, and he's like, everything has uh, got to be all fancy and tied up in a nice little. That's not true. I know that's not true about you, Scott. But it can be, hey, God, what the fuck? What yeah. the hell? Where? To give me some guidance here. Wait, that's what it was for me. It's uh, and still is a lot of time. Okay, God, show me what to do here. Uh, I have no clue. I mean, you can make up your own prayers, or do I have to use the use the ones that were in the book or something? Make up your own prayers. Although okay. I, I I find great value in three and eleven. But all right, I had a sponsor who said when you're all confused and you're agitated in the morning, hit your knees, get down, and just say one word. Look, sort of look up. Like mm. you're looking up at your higher power. Yeah. You just say, whatever. But mean it. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, thank you, uh, Scott Basinger. Man, it's so good to reconnect with you. And um, now I remember, you know, we went to a lot of meetings together quite quite a while ago. And now I remember uh, the warmth and the goodness. And the, he's just a good human being, Scott. Thanks for all your good work and, and the, the, all the on behalf of all the people that you've helped, including me. Uh, Thanks, Bob B. And Wes, so proud of you. Um, Thanks, Scott. Yeah. Wes is doing the deal, man. I'm telling you, he's, you know, he's cool. Wes, we're way beyond cool, Scott. yeah. And, uh, but Wes is still kind of cool. He actually has this other podcast that is these five guys doing all this cool shit. And, uh, and he actually has been open and honest about his recovery on there and has helped a bunch of people who wouldn't, who would never have, never have gotten the message because they never listen to this right they're not going to find this thing but they'll listen to uh and, and so good good work Wes. keep it up um thanks. and uh so i love you guys thanks so much for being here i guess we have the 11th step absolutely figured out now absolutely uh every last piece of it we have articulated here uh, <laughs> yeah actually that is a lifetime and many lifetimes of exploration uh, as an opportunity, yeah. but anyway, yeah. So thanks, Scott. How can people reach you if they want a, a more of the Scott Basinger uh, wisdom train? Uh, thanks, Bob. The best way is my email. It's Scott B S C O T T B at B C M, like Baylor College of Medicine dot edu. Nice. They're still letting you in the doors over there, huh? Wow. Yeah. They haven't found out yet. No. and there's a are, lot of there, years. There are a couple things that happened there that only my sponsor knows. <laughs> All right. And uh, Nicole, our program manager of Deep Waters, if you're still with us here, would you uh, come on and uh, let folks know how they can reach us? And uh, there she is. Hey, yeah, thanks, Bob. Thanks, Scott. It was a really good discussion. Um, you can reach Deep Waters Recovery. Our number is 512 677 7847. We are an advanced recovery and healing experience for women and men. It is an online 10 hours per week, three groups per week program. Um, you can find out more information if you go on our website, deepwatersrecovery.com. And again, our number is 512-677-7847. And you can reach me directly. And my email is admin at deepwatersrecovery.com, A-D-M-I-N at deepwatersrecovery.com. We post weekly blogs from our community. Our podcast, The Recovery Crew, comes out weekly. And you can follow us on all the social media sites, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube. And um, again, deepwatersrecovery.com. Thanks, Nicole. Nicole's doing great work to keep this thing together, keeping the ship uh, in the channel rather than bumping off the sides of the channel. <laughs> Appreciate you. Uh, we are, uh, uh, I think you described it, but we're a 10 hour program, Recover Heal launch for folks that are ready to really get their life back and bring meaning into your life. 
it's a it's a it's a fairly big commitment. It's a 12 week commitment, but we're a community of people trying to bring the transformational life of recovery and healing that trauma and and getting our creative juices flowing, right? So, uh, and uh, in the spring, it's probably going to be spring before we do uh, the DWI. We love that the Deep Waters Intensive. The 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 initials are DWI, Scott. <laughs> okay, so I don't know. I guess nobody gets that joke. Uh, <laughs> I about that joke, and I love that. Let okay, me, let me give everybody an yeah. unpaid uh, advertisement. Um, right. Bob mentioned Herbert Spencer's quote about contempt prior to investigation, and if you're at a place in your recovery and you know you need more, you know you need to go deeper. Try deep water recovery. Bob Bear uh, is a, an amazing healer, a, a wonderful, fun man. And um, I, I just really support you all having the courage to take a chance with this. So I was not asked to say that, but I believe that from the bottom of my heart. Thanks, Scott. Folks, you're in the deep waters now.